Welcome to South Central Regional Library Safe Inside Your Walls programming, supported by Safe at Home Manitoba. My name is Linda and I am a librarian and a knitter. This series of videos is all about how to knit a super simple block afghan. Today, I'm going to show you how to choose your materials, how to cast on, and how to do the knit stitch. If you're a complete beginner or you want a refresher on knitting, this series is for you. I know it sounds like a big project, but this is a great project for beginners because you make it in small units instead of one giant blanket. This way, you get regular practice in casting on and casting off, and it's easy to see that you're making progress because it's quick to finish a row or a block. I'll teach you all the skills you need for it. For this particular super simple afghan, I'll show you how to cast on, to do the knit stitch, to cast off, and to sew the blocks together. This afghan idea is also really flexible. You can change up the size of the afghan, the yarn you use, the stitch patterns, uh, and I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start at the beginning, your materials. For this project, you'll need yarn, knitting needles, a yarn needle, and a pair of scissors. Tape measure optional. Before I start though, a quick disclaimer. I've been knitting for years and like most knitters, I have a ton of odds and ends of yarn and even a few unfinished projects kicking around. In the interest of using up my stash and also not going out to shop, I'm making do with the yarn and needles I have on hand. For example, sample afghan here, made from a project that never got finished, and it was close enough to spec to reuse the blocks for this series. It's just that the yarn in it is a lighter weight than I'm advising you to use, to use here. Now, if you're a beginner, look for a yarn that's a bit heavier. Most yarn labels have a yarn council symbol on it. The number tells you what class the yarn belongs to. Four is medium, and it's a nice, comfortable yarn to work with. This particular yarn is Bernat Pop. Something like Red Heart Super Saver or Red Heart Comfort would work as well. An acrylic yarn is fine to start with, although you want something that should feel nice to the touch. Save the expensive wool until you know this is a hobby you want to spend money on. Cotton yarn is hard to knit with, so probably avoid that for now. Now for this particular afghan, you'll need about 150 grams each of two colors, so about 300 grams total. And it's better to have a little more than you need than a little less. Look for a yarn that's smooth and not too loose. A yarn that's fuzzy will make it hard to see your stitches. A yarn that's spun kind of loosely may separate and you'll end up picking up only a, only a part of the yarn to knit your stitch. I'd also recommend a lighter solid color. A light color helps you to see the shadows so you know where to slip your needle into the stitch. Too many colors can make it hard for you to see your stitches properly. The Bernat Pop yarn I'm using is a multicolor, yeah, but it stays the same color for a long time, so you can knit most or all of a block in the same color. Or maybe this is a do as I say, not as I do. And I should say, in spite of all that I've just said about yarn choice, you can knit with any yarn, really. My suggestions are there to give you some guidelines and hopefully make it easier, but if you don't have the perfect yarn, go for it anyway. I did. How do you think I figured out all of this? So if you can, learn from my mistakes instead of making your own. Next, the needles. You're looking for needles that are the right size for your yarn. The rule is basically heavier yarn needs larger needles. If the yarn is too heavy for the needle, you'll have a hard time pulling the stitches through. If the yarn is too light, you'll end up with knitting that looks more like mesh than fabric. The yarn label will help you choose your needle size too. If you look at this square, you'll see that it has a needle symbol and there's a size there. This yarn recommends a five millimeter needle. There are different kinds of needles, single pointed like these, double pointed for knitting tubes or in the round and circular. You can use circular needles for knitting in the round or knitting flat. I'm going to knit with a single pointed today. Okay. So you have your yarn and your needle. Let's start with casting on. First, make a 
slip knot with the loop sliding on the long end. Take the short end of your yarn, the yarn that's not at the end that's not attached to the ball, and cross the short end under the yarn. Pinch the place where they cross, then reach down through the loop to grab the long end and pull it back through. Put that loop on a needle and snug it up a little. Now, hold that needle in your non-dominant hand. I'm right-handed, so I'm holding it in my left. You should be able to do the opposite of this if you're left-handed, but we'll call this the holding needle. Hold the needle like this, from the top, between your thumb and back three fingers. Loop the yarn up over your index finger like this. You can wrap the yarn around your little finger or pinch it between your back fingers so there's some tension on the yarn and it doesn't flop around. Now, take the other needle in your dominant hand, my right. We'll call this the working needle. Push the point of this needle through the near side of the stitch to the far side. You're going in the same direction as the point of the holding needle. Wrap the yarn around the working needle and pull it through your slip knot loop to the near side. Slide this new loop onto the point of your holding needle. Pull the yarn a little bit to snug it up if you need to. You've now cast on one stitch. Now, slip the point of the working needle through the loop you just made and same thing again. Through the loop from the near side of the stitch to the far side towards the point of the holding needle. Wrap the yarn around the working needle, pull it back through the loop, and slip the new loop onto the tip of the holding needle. And repeat. You'll want to start with 20 stitches on your holding needle. One of the things knitters talk about a lot is tension, which is mostly about how tight your stitches are. Usually it's in reference to your knit stitches, but it applies to casting on as well. What you're aiming for is that the stitches fit closely around the needle, but you can still turn the needle inside the stitches pretty easily. Too loose, and the knitting will tend to slide off your needle and look loose and floppy and full of holes. If your stitches are too tight or your tension is too tight, every stitch will be a struggle because you'll have to force the point of the working needle into the stitch. Again, that's something I learned the hard way. Okay, back to our project. We've cast on enough stitches. You have 20, right? And now it's time to start knitting. You still have your holding needle with all the stitches on it in your non-dominant hand. And your empty working needle is in your right, is in your dominant hand. Everything is arranged the way you had it for casting on. Yarn over your index finger. We're ready to go. Now, slide the point of your working needle into the stitch closest to the point of the holding needle. It works best to slide it through the bottom of the stitch. Going from near side to far side toward the point of the needle. Wrap the yarn around the working needle and pull it through. So far, it's exactly like casting on, but this is where things change. To knit, instead of casting on another stitch, slip the stitch you just knit through off the end of the holding needle. Now you have one stitch on your working needle and 19 on your holding needle, and you have knit one stitch. I'll show you that again. In through the near side, wrap the yarn around, pull it back out, slip off the lower stitch. Some people have a little memory thing they say. In through the front door, put on your scarf, come back out again, jump off the porch. That's the knit stitch. In a way, it's really simple. A knit stitch is in, wrap, out, drop. In, wrap, out, drop. But when you're getting started knitting, it's also really complicated. There are so many things to figure out. How do I hold the yarn? How do I keep the knitting from moving around? How do I get the yarn to stay around the needle? How tight is too tight? Why does it feel like I have 16 fingers on each hand? It's a lot to think about all at once. But just go slow and practice. You will gradually figure things out, maybe even without you noticing it. But with every stitch, it gets a little bit easier. 
Just remember, there are lots of different ways to hold the yarn or to arrange your hands to keep the tension, and none of them are wrong as long as you're getting the results you want. Sure, some might be a little more work, a little less ergonomic, but if you're okay with that, it doesn't matter. When you get to the end of the row, move your working needle to your non-dominant hand. Now, it's the holding needle. Move your empty holding needle to your dominant hand. Now, it's going to be your working needle. Arrange your hands and your yarn and begin knitting again. I'll just explain the mechanics in a little more detail. If that helps you understand a little better, great. If not, ignore it and keep doing whatever works for you. Anyway, what I'm doing is I'm resting the tip of my working needle against the holding needle between the first two stitches, close to the bottom of the needle. And then I'm sliding or sweeping my working needle along and under the needle. That makes it easier to find the bottom of the stitch where there's naturally a little gap and my needle goes through it easily. Then I can wrap the yarn around the working needle and slide the tip back along the holding needle back through the stitch. That sort of traps the yarn and makes it easier to pull through the stitch. Now, keep knitting, keep practicing. To make the squares for this Afghan, you really want your squares to be, well, square, as tall as they are wide. If you want to freeform it and improvise, you can make them taller or shorter, twice as tall as wide, half as tall, or maybe you just want to keep knitting until you have a scarf. If that's what you want to do, go for it. But the, for the purposes of this Afghan, actually square or as close as you can get for blocks are what we're going for. So that's it for this video. In the next one, we'll look at casting off and a few optional things you can do to fancy things up, if you want. Thanks for joining us for this Safe at Home Manitoba program. Stay safe inside your wall.